L E F K O E man with Westbrook. Yeah, yeah. the oh, Rocket Man. Yes. And special guest, Lofa Tatupu. How's it you going? are the man, brother. Do I get a nickname? What? Yeah. No, he came up with his own. I came up with my own. That's our rule. So Lofa blank Tatupu. What do you want it to be? Um Take your time. Man. Take your time. Yeah, I'll come give back it to us when you think of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it at the end. Yeah. He yeah. likes to put you on the spot. It's be so special. It's, yeah, you gotta, yeah. Yeah. You gotta think gotta about it. it right? I, I want to give respect to your full name. Can you say your full name for me, please? <laughs> Mosiula Mea Alofa Tatupu. Beautiful. Love it. And what's interesting is there's a moment behind you. So if we take your camera right now, that really messed me up. So oh. in that picture right behind you. Ooh. I'm an Eagles fan. Westbrook, I think you were on that team. Whoa. Lofa had three interceptions against the Eagles Whoa. in Monday Night Football. Oh. It was, no, time out. Time out. I'm sorry we're going right there. Well, that's the First of all, you didn't even tell me about the picture. That's number one. Well, like, it's literally there's right. That's, that's kind of selfish. And number two, <laughs> that's our team. I know. That this but, all went but, down on. But he's our guest today. Okay, yeah. That's right. and, we'll make an exception. But, but the reason that I really cool. learned about, like, your heritage and everything was because you did that. And it was an honoring, I believe, of Vi Sikahama, who was also of Samoan descent. It was, and was yeah. a legend. Tongan. legend Tongan. Tongan. Yeah. My yeah. apologies. Not Polynesian, though, right? Yes, Polynesian. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was this moment that the entire country was like, how cool is this? And I remember being at home being like, stop intercepting <laughs> AJ Feely right now. Oh, man. Cool night. Well, it was it was paying homage to not just Vi, but also my linebacker coach in college, Kenny Norton Jr. Oh, yeah. Mm. And, you Beast. know, Kenny, anytime, you know, yeah, three times Super Bowl champion, pro bowler. Anytime he made a play, it was him paying homage to his dad, mm -hmm. the boxer. Wow. Ken Norton, yeah. Is there anyone doing this right now? Like, can we make this a thing that keeps going? Are you allowed to celebrate these days? I, you know, I don't know. The guys are celebrating their butts off. They're now. doing, they're, they're, they're going doing crazy. NSYNC dancing. Got to be a team and, celebration, which is cool. I do like that. Seattle is one of the better teams at celebrating right now. I did see that last. I time. saw a yeah. whole defensive side of not just the guys on the ball, just on the field. I saw the entire defense yeah. come yeah. Off go the to the end line. zone off the sideline. So that's a Saints take thing. Your, Saints started this a few years ago, where if they get a pick or a turnover, they all run down, they all celebrate. That's your, that's Do you crazy. like that? I, you know, act like you've been there before. Personally, that's how you, you are. Know? Now. Just, like, over. Just like I used to watch him. You know, when yeah. he scored a touchdown, just throw the ball back. Okay, you know, next play. But see, um, you, I, no, no. See, he, he's he's being okay. modest because here's the deal. We played Seattle several times, and it wasn't when he scored a touchdown. It was when I'm when you're helping me up off the ground because you just smacked me in the mouth. That's what's <laughs> going on. Great guy. Lofa is a great guy. And, I, and you can tell those great guys throughout the game, they help you up, they're kind, things like that. But they also, when they get a chance to knock the piss out of you, So was there a one it. moment that you remember? I can't remember. I just remember getting up like, <laughs> come on, 51. Not again, bro. Well, it's a respect Not again. factor, though. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so in between the whistles, yeah, it's, you know, you are that, that alter ego. You That that wild man gets to come yeah. out, that beast, if you will. And, uh, you know, but once that whistle's blown, it's, you know, hey, we're all brothers. That's right. And so, that is true. And so that's the, the respect factor. Can I was. pump him up really quick? Absolutely. I mean, okay, just because I know that. So, like, he did play at Maine for a year before he went to USC. Yeah, yeah. How did that matchup go? Well, Lofa, how did that matchup go? I'll let Brad tell it, and then I'll tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> well, in the college, <laughs> you know, I was in my prime, right? I was like, I was kind of, you know, where things were, were making sense. I was, so I'm a few years older than you. When you were born in 83, 84, something 82. like that? 82. Okay, yeah. so I'm a few years old. I was born in 79. So I was at the end of my college time when you were probably just a freshman my or freshman so. freshman year, yeah. And so we were... We were rolling a little bit. I was, I had things going on a little bit. Well, you're bit the all-time leading yard getter in NCAA history. When I was the player of the year in college that year, I was, wow. I, I had things going on. I mean, it was, it was, it was a good year for me. How was and, that game though against Maine? I think you guys ended up beating us, right? Uh, personally, it was like record breaking for you, and I think you yeah, only played went, two quarters. Yeah, it, went, it went well. It went well. I could tell that story if you want me to. <laughs> I want to hear. I want to okay. hear all of it. Yeah. So the whole week, you know, I, it was going to be one of my first starts, and I was trading it out of time because someone in front of me, the guy uh, Rob Kierstead, had gone down with an ankle injury, and so I'm studying film and just watching, you know, West do his thing, and I was like, okay, so I got in there, and on the first play that I got in there, I broke through the line and I did make a tackle. And I'm, and I'm talking noise, right? And he looks up. He goes, all right. <laughs> the next play was a 75-yard screen pass for a touchdown in which the first time my angle ever got beat was 
this in your right whole here. life. In my whole life, so I've never seen life, speed. Like you've been able to run to the sideline and chase a guy down. Well, that's the game's all about angles, especially when you're yeah. a four eight forty guy like me. Four eight three. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey, you look. I looked it up. At least you did up. the homework, right? Yeah. But um, and then I want to say between kick return, punt return. Yards of scrimmage, it was over 300 or uh, in one half. Yeah. Because you wow. hurt your ankle yeah, that's in the right. third quarter. That's right. <laughs> Things went well. Things went so well. So we, okay. we were down 41 to 20 at half. Homecoming. Wow. Yeah. We're just getting embarrassed. You were homecoming. We were home. Yeah. Incredible. And uh, we came all the way back. We won for, by a field goal, 44 to 41 or something right. like that. We kick a squib kick. They pick it up and they go to about the 50. He hobbles onto the field. Taped up. Stop. Runs down. Out jumps. Everybody catches it, makes two guys miss dives, and our safety just catches them at the one. Like this. We're I'm this talking, far away yeah. from it. I mean, I'm right there. Like Mike Jones on the right Super there. Bowl making the tackle it was, on Kevin Dyson. Well, it's just uh, how did you how do you uh, jump everybody know, after know. you have a high ankle sprain? Well, and so like you wow. have, it, was, it was it was a good game, but we and we ended up losing. That's one of the rare stories where both of you come out looking great. You got the W. You had the all-time performance. It was incredible. That's pretty great. No, th- this is – I'm going to fast forward to that game that you're talking about in Philly. The Monday Night Football The Monday game. Night Football. So That the, was the, one of the most depressing games I've ever watched. Well, well as just imagine me. So I'm, I'm seeing sure. Lofa. I'm sure watching – again, for you, we're man. watching the tape, though. We're, we're seeing a linebacker make all the plays. Like K.J. Wright and, and, and Wagner – this was the, the this was the brain. So this is how it started mm. in Seattle. This guy right here, he was able to make every play. He knew all. So so part of it, he just talked about watching film. Part of breaking down offenses is knowing kind of have an idea what's going to happen before Tendency you get there. Based smart football. smart football players like Lofa, they know what's going to happen. And Andy Reid was predictable no anyway. Doubt. So up oh, screen here it comes. <laughs> And, and they're calling it out, and now I'm in the backfield like, uh-oh, yeah, it is a screen. Yes. And you're just hoping that somebody blocks the middle line. That linebacker. is my just favorite thing when I hear football players say is when you have a Zach Thomas, when you have yeah. a Junior Seau, where the quarterback gets to the line and he's handing it off to the left, and the linebacker like 10 seconds early goes, they're coming into the A-gap on the know. left. And the quarterback goes, Shit, man, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, like, I don't, I don't want to get tackled. Give it to you. Because if he Pop audibles it, yes. yeah, damn. But, so, but the beauty is when you watch the game, now obviously I'm on the other side, and so you don't appreciate it during the game. Actually, you hate it. But now when you're playing, you're like, I mean, after the game, you're like, you're just watching them linebacker move, understands the how to beat an offensive lineman, how, understands how to tackle, yes. all the do all the right things. This is their prime example. That's and, and listen, I know you coached in Seattle, and I know you coach both of those guys out there, some of the best linebackers in the league. And I know they're talented guys. I have to believe you taught both of those guys, right? As well as Wagner, something that has made them to the potential that they reach at this point because they're special guys, but it started with you. I remember playing against you. It started with you for sure. I, I would love to take some credit, but I really, you know, Kenny Norton did a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. And then I got to, the, you know, the honor of learning under Michael Barrow, who Michael was a fan Barrow. of him growing up at the U. Yeah, yeah just right. knocking people right. out. So, um, you know, the the foundation was in place. And, um, you know, there were certain things, you know, that I would, you know, uh, try to further their football IQ. Um, with KJ, it was more of a, you know, take more chances and mm-hmm. not take chances, but calculate a risk. Like you were saying, breaking down tendencies, breaking down formations, yeah. down in distance. Time of the clock, what the offense coordinator's natural, you know, play calling uh, rhythm is. You get that in, you know, sync. And not to put a pun on their last celebration, yeah. but uh, <laughs> it's just, it's chess, not checkers out there. And it's just so much easier when you know where your help is and where you can take your shot. There was a moment just now that I need to settle in because I think it's a developing storyline this season. You said Andy Reid gets predictable. Uh-huh. You laughed. And the reason that I think about it is you did laugh. I watched it happen. (laughs) But the reason it's interesting to me is this is kind of what we've seen with Andy Reid. And now we're in that weird October, November month where Andy always kicks the NFL's ass in September. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of go, this is what they're doing. And we learn their tendencies. Again, for the record, Sammy Watkins is hurt. Their left tackle's out. And they just got Tyree Kill back. But are you guys seeing anything right now about the Chiefs where you're like, it's a little predictable? I just, I just think that Andy has gotten so far out of balance, run pass, that, yeah, it's predictable because you know there's going to be a pass play. Mm. And that means the defensive linemen are teeing off. They're saying, we don't have to worry about the run. It, even if they do run, 
Nobody cares. We'll find a way to tackle LaShawn McCoy. Eight carries for McCoy last week. In, in the game where you're up big early. So, yeah, they're predictable because they're throwing the ball almost every play. I told you last week, I mean, earlier this week, that when you have a player like Patrick Mahomes, and this is, this is not to say that you shouldn't get a player like this, but the truth is when you have a player like him because he's special, happened in Aaron, with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, they're so special, you're saying just put the ball in their hands. Yeah. Allow them to go win the game. Andy Reid has that problem because Patrick Mahomes is that good. The problem is, is that you have to have a well-rounded team. I'm you worried can, about Patrick Thursday night. Are you? Take Denver, oh, like Denver. they get after the quarterback good, a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah. But what do you think? Like when you played Andy, we're like, and since you're such a big like film studier, were you like, do you remember now like what the tendencies were, and do you ever see it when you watch the Chiefs now? Oh yeah, even down to specific plays. But mm-hmm. I don't see it with you know he's doing some things that I was not accustomed to, and I know you know the playbook yeah. better on the offensive side. But in terms of Formation recognition, they, they, you know, there's some things that are always going to be. That's who you are, yeah. you know, as a coach. If it's something, you know, that he believes in, what he's seen work, and and he's just put his twist onto it. Was it an Andy screen? Like when you when he he loves screens, loves and so if you coming. get you, if you get out of that first fifteen, which is scripted, mm-hmm. you know, in that West Coast offense, then you know if you haven't seen one, then you're going to get maybe one or two. You know, I have two defensive questions, and then we're going to get to the cup, and then we're going to get to your bag. Uh, number one. I'm thinking about like you were just talking about clock recognition in the down and distance. When I watch an offense huddle, it's one guy and everyone's intently listening. And then as they hear their responsibilities, they peel off. The wide receivers run out and you could tell he's not getting the ball the way he's running out. Like you could tell sometimes. <laughs> Body language. Yeah. With the defensive huddle, it's like I see one guy go Raider and then they all it's this. Are defensive guys paying attention to the down and distance? Like, what are Absolutely. you guys doing in the huddle and before the snap? It's a wild, and this happens about 60 to 70 times a game, right? That's how many plays there are. And it's a wild, you know, just uh, chaotic even um, sequence of, okay, the ball's lined up, form the huddle, right? And in the huddle, I got my safety giving me the down and distance. Um, I'm looking at the time of the clock. Well, now we have those headphones yeah. or that, that mm-hmm. uh, microphone in your helmet. So it made things a lot easier until that goes out because right. it used to be hand signals back in the day. And so what did make it easier with the hand signals was that the whole defense, the secondary, could get on the same page with it. And that's how we communicate in the deafening noise that is yeah. Seattle you know, Stadium. But um, – that from there, um, the my will linebacker Leroy Hill, who came in as a rookie with me, um, he would give me the personnel. So you know, twelve, you know, one back, two tight ends, twenty-one, two backs, one tight end. So the way the public thinks, it's like they think whoever has the dot on their helmets in charge of everything. Mm-hmm. But for you to tell me that like different. there's a different guy responsible for you, everything, you got to delegate, you know, responsibly. You what know? if one of them? Goes out on a play. The next will back has to. He's got wow. to look into the backfield and tell me who's coming on, who's going so off. So it truly is next. And man. so I'm thinking and hearing all this while I'm looking at the sideline or getting the play. Because then in the two minute, there's no communication, and it's um, communication like, and everything. You know, life is you know just key. So yeah. um, the more you know, the easier it is out there, and that's um, that's something we we stressed. That's all. I totally forgot what my second question was because that answer was quarterback great. of the defense. Not only the quarterback of the defense in high school. It, this has to be yeah, rare. He played quarterback. <laughs> you played quarterback and linebacker. Led the team in tackles, 100 tackles. Did you play defense in high school, too? I played cornerback. Corner, right? corner. Yeah, yeah, I played corner. Just like, I'm a Running back yeah. corner is one of the greatest combinations. Yeah, that's a good combination. It's and, rare that you see a linebacker. Too, right? Yeah, I played basketball, too. Heard you go. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was a good athlete back in, back in long ago, long, long ago. But it's rare that you have a linebacker and quarterback. But – that was out of necessity, and but I think that did. It's a skill like set, What you're though. saying, it did, yes. You communicate to both sides. It's really doing the same thing on both sides. You communicate. I'm getting guys organized. Yeah. You ran the ball a bunch. You threw it a little bit too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a skill set. But we talk about leadership on around the league, and we're looking at some of these quarterbacks, young quarterbacks that are struggling just a bit. I think their leadership is part of that of too. Of course, and yeah. and that's why I also think that you shouldn't write them off. Because that's an easy thing to get You can grow into it. You can mature. I think it's hard to get more accurate. I think it's hard to get a stronger arm. I think you can become a leader. Absolutely. I think you have to have that gene. Yeah. But I also think you have to learn how to be a leader. Mm -hmm. One question before I get to the cup and then your bag. Did you do the haka before games ever? No, I never did the haka. I, so I, I well, okay, go ahead. I'm asking ignorant questions, and I'm happy. No. to you. So, have you done in your life, or is that not part of your culture? I did it at the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. I wow. was on stage, and I didn't, you know, didn't do it. We, I watched uh, several people do it correctly, sure, and sure. I just followed along because I had a respect. It's 
I am of Samoan heritage, but I grew up in Boston. A lot of people <laughs> don't know that. Of right. course. So, and so that's where the edge and the— Because my know. question for the Haka was always, I think it's one of the most intriguing things I've ever seen. It's fascinating to watch the unison and the energy. But I've always wondered, to be yelling and expelling that much energy right before a game— and I think about how you guys are always talking about bottling it up and then letting it out. I've always wondered, how do you let it out like that and then let it out again for the <laughs> Is game? Is it counterproductive? That, I, and, I, and again, it means so much. We'll have to look at the correlation of performance then yeah. in, in, in that case. I got to right? tell a quick story about that. So I'm in San Fran. Mike Singletary is a coach. And you know Big Isaac, right? Yeah. yeah. So he, he's a Samoan guy. Big, biggest man I've seen before, just huge. And so now at practice, he wants to do that before we go play Seattle. Mm -hmm. And Mike's like, no, we're not doing it. That, that was like on a Thursday. On Saturday, Mike's like, let's practice it. And so I'm like, man, I can't believe we're doing this. It just wasn't my thing. So then right before the game, literally in the locker room, we walked to walk out. Singletary says, listen, we're not doing a dance. I don't care what you do. We practice it. I didn't like it. We're not doing it. Everyone just disregarded the coach. We come out and do the dance. We get smashed, probably 42 zip, <gasps> literally smashed. We're, but we were all doing the dance. We're all happy. And we go out there, first series, everybody's tired to your point. <laughs> That's my theory. Everybody's exhausted. We've yeah. been dancing. We've been doing, uh, and, and I don't know the dance, but I mean, it was it was involved. And you got to get into it. You guys are always it. talking about how you're focused all the time and your energy. And, no, mm -hmm. yeah. exhausted, all exhausted. Right. Uh, reach into the cup. What is this? It's random topics. We have no idea. Producer Ingram put it in, but don't read it yet. What <laughs> voice should he have? To... Let's go back to a traditional. Oh, yeah. unless you have one. I was going to say game show voice. Game show voices are good. Unless you what have about a the, What about like a cartoon voice like in the movie um, Moana? The, the father? Don't do it. I'm trying to tell you. That's a... That's a that's a Polynesian voice, right? It is a Polynesian voice. I'm going to give you just, you have to read this in a game show announcer voice. Game I just show. watched can that you, movie can, yesterday can with I my kids. Example? All right, it's time for. <laughs> and now. Yes. What's one concrete thing we can do to fix the NFL refereeing situation? Mm. How was that? We with a hard hitting one. I uh, think that's pretty easy to fix. Okay, let's hear it. You got to get full-time referees, first of all. Okay. They have to be full-time. So they have yep. to be doing their job, getting better. Just imagine if I'm working on Sunday, running up and down the field, and then I got to go to a real job, my accounting job on Monday. So I looked into this. Walt Anderson's been a, an official in his life for 44 years. Mm -hmm. Up until 2003, he was a ref and a dentist. Okay. Mm. He's no longer a dentist. That's a real job. But my thing is, is so he's been a referee for 44 years. How I would make it better is two ways. One... He said, I found an interview with him in 2003 where he said, the game is moving so fast and we're trying to figure it out on the fly and people at home have replay. That's right. That's 2003. Think about the televisions that we had in 2003. Think about what the games look like in 2003. The, the replay, the slow-mo. Think about how much Eli. older he is now. Exactly. So one, I believe what the AAFL, what the, the Alliance, whatever, they had this thing called the eye in the sky where there would be a referee that was up in a booth that was watching the game and replay like everybody else and could call down and be like, hey, that was not an illegal hands to the face on uh, the dual alliance. Whoa, 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 whoa. So whoa. that's interesting. You said something on Monday, Tuesday, that what I say? you thought. You, you saw the referee well, go are. like this. They so they're talking to him. Yeah, but it's mm. bullshit. No, <laughs> but the they're second, talking to him. The second thing they're I would do is, the second thing I would do is, I would make the salary for a referee very high. In this country, when we have jobs that people don't like to do, we pay them more. If you work in a coal mine, we pay you a large amount of money. Right. Who wants to be a referee right now? Everybody. Bullshit. You're crazy. Who, who wants to go on TV Are you and crazy? get ridiculed? Yeah. There are I, referees in college and in, the, in high school that will love an NFL job being a referee. Are you out of I your mind? What do you Because think? they love the game. But what are the qualifications? Is it just experience? No, you got to be a dentist. You got to be an orthodontist. No, you be, you, to be, I don't know. Well, but, I mean. It's, it's, experience. it's experience. You start at college. You work your way up. And so that's how it goes. That's the official criteria for getting into I officiating. So. yeah. Um, you know, because. There's, I think, many people more qualified that know about rules. Just I'm talking former players. And mm. if they're at all, you know, in love with the game, then they would be open to maybe a school for officials. Right. You know? I like that. And that because we're used to making split decisions, you know, quick time, mm -hmm. real time, and not, you know, and then going to the next play. Here's the concern with that. What's that? Lofa Tatupu, head referee for the Super Bowl. Mm, mm, it's the mm. Seahawks versus the Steelers. 
bad. Well, I, well no, but what I what I mean is we know is how just, that one went in 05. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what oh, I mean though, right. so that was going to get to my next point. Okay, then, go for it. We need to just stop crying about officiating. People, they're human. Um, but if you want me to elaborate, game, that game had a huge referee thing with Ben huge. Roethlisberger. Huge. Huge. Go into it. I'm going to shut up. I mean, do you really? See, of course, you have to bring up that painful experience. But um, you know, which this I'll segue this into our next. Uh, speaking of trauma, uh, yeah. but it's uh, <laughs> you know that is. And that's that's where I you know I see these games and people complaining about one call. Man, we had ten. The least penalized team in the NFL that year, we had ten wow. calls on us. Wow. A palm return for fifty yards by Peter Warwick that came back. Mm. The the push off by DJack allegedly in the end zone when they were both tussling. Oh. Um, the offsides by you know the D end and they called us for holding when the guy just slipped. Oh. And then follow that, Matt Hausbeck throws a pick and on his inter- on the interception return. He, you know, went through. It was one of the best plays I've seen. He went through the thigh boards of a lead blocker mm-hmm. and got to the carrier wow. and, and stopped the touchdown. And they threw a flag on a block below the waist. Going now, uh, yeah, you go, but it was yep. it was you know called a block below the waist. Uh-huh. He wasn't blocking for the guy he was tackling. Yeah. And it's just so you know, I've got fined for just that uh, fifteen thousand bucks one time. Just for that? Yeah, yeah, <sighs> on an interception. Well, so the thing is. Wow. I mean, I literally just typed in Seahawks Steelers referee Super Bowl just to yeah. see who it was. And the first article that pops up is referee Bill Levy admits that he screwed up and didn't understand oh. the rules of the game in the Super Bowl. What? So it's funny because this is a thing that happens every year. What do you mean doesn't understand the rules? You're supposed to be the best ref. That's why you get the job. I think at the time it was irrefutable or um, indisputable yes. video evidence. So. Hey, I called in in real time that way. I have to, you know. Which is what they're doing now. They are. But it was such a new rule then that kind of like look at this pass interference rule. We don't know which way it's going. They don't know when to call it. And, you know, it could cost you a challenge flag and ultimately a timeout in the end or a chance to review a bigger play that will be, you know, more pivotal to the success of the game. So it's, it's what I say is, hey, suck it up. If you're good enough, you'll beat them. Uh, We were not good enough that day. Hats off to the Steelers. They are the Super Bowl champs. Because of your humility, uh, we're going to get back to the cup. Let's get to the bag. What did you bring us? I know this is something you're working on post-career, and it's something that I'm already in support of. There it is. So this is a brand-new CBD line, Zone In. Yeah. The product's called Balance. Um, there's several athletes with me backing this, uh, invested in it even, and, you know, the just – if I could talk in a little depth about what it's done for me, I could explain. I, I would go love on for to know. Hours. I would love to know if you could do it in this vein. NFL players is the one player right now that I think the public, when we see someone get hit or we hear the stories, our heart goes out to you guys because we know that what you guys gave up for our entertainment. And the thing that I think the most frustrating is our nation is going through an opioid epidemic. And we're seeing how much something like CBD can alleviate those problems. And I, I find no group to need it more than probably former football players. And, I, and the fact that you have so many with you, how is it helping your post-career? Well, I found it three years ago. And three years ago, I was 280 pounds. I had mm. ballooned up. When I was coaching in 15 and 16, late I was— Late nights, late snacks. Oh, man, you, they, they feed you good, too. Yeah. You know, thank you, and uh, <laughs> unbelievable. And you know. no thank you. And no thank you. Yeah, right? awesome, right? So I got up to 280, which is a hard look to pull off at 5'11". <laughs> Damn. And so Damn. with everything, it wasn't just uh, the body that was aching. It was the, the, the mental toll that the game took on me and you know and um so with that um i had heard about cbd for you know a couple years before that but still hadn't tried after career i got into the industry and i gave it you know i gave it multiple multiple um formulations to try um eventually stumbled across one that you know i love and then when the farm bill passed last december um i you know went about vetting out a lab to partner with and you know making sure the highest quality Full spectrum, even calling it CBD is a disservice to the whole plant. Right. It's a full spectrum of, you know, phytocannabinoids. And I can I could geek out on this I, stuff I can for tell. hours. Because we were talking before the show, a lot of people are throwing C B D on stuff and you don't know if it's real or not. Wait. Yeah. And you, it sounds like you extensively went through and said, I'm going to look into this. I had to know what was impacting my life so much to move me to, you know, hand it out buy it with my own dime, give it to friends that were going through the same things I was going through. Yeah. Because of the FDA, I can't tell, I can't share the whole experience, but in time, testimonials and, and other stories will, you know, can confirm what I'm saying in the experience I've had. That's, yeah. you know, you find people who 
in us, we have everybody, all mammals, there's an endocannabinoid system. And what it is is receptors that this plant and all of its phytocannabinoids, that just means plant-based cannabinoids, yep. it acts on those receptors, CB1 and CB2. Mm -hmm. It puts you back in sync. And I'm telling you, mm. like, I've never felt better, and I've never been better mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So how do you how do you take it? Is it a morning thing? Is it a night thing? Is it when you need it thing? Event, it's a and when you need it thing, and yeah. your body will tell you. Because well, I'm an I need it all the time thing. <laughs> so I know, like, I look. You wake up and need it? Look, I'm going to explain something to both of you guys. <laughs> take it now. Take As it now. professional athletes, I hear you guys say this all the time. You know when your body doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know I have never been a two with my body like that. Like, I've just, it's been a but thing. You, you haven't had to. That's why. Well, yeah, maybe. Damn. You, yeah, you, maybe you not. No, no. Sorts. But you just haven't yes, had yes, to. Yes, and yes. That's, I've even, so my thing is, is like the mental acuity part is what I'm very interested in. Well, cognitively, because yeah, everybody. I'm sweating because I'm big. Everybody okay. sees everybody <laughs> sees the body transformation, right? And they're just like, wow, what is it? You right. Know? But it's nothing compared to how I feel. And mm -hmm. when I talk about the cognitive, you know, in terms of attention, um, doing this segment, um, memory, you know, I was suffering through short-term memory mm -hmm. loss. Mm -hmm. That's all coming back. And just, you know, being my best self, I, I feel it and I live it, mm -hmm. you know, daily. The question, I, I mean, because you talk about memory loss, and obviously I, I've, I've dealt with some concussions. And this, by the way, this is not going to be football player Brian Westbrook. This is venture capitalist Brian yeah, Westbrook. Yeah, we, we need to figure out to where we're at here, just yeah, in yeah. case. You know, I, I like to invest in. Different. I I heard him going through his thing, yeah. and you were like, "Oh my god, what kind of connectors?" Yeah, yes. exactly. These I don't even know what these <laughs> words are, but no. <laughs> but but you have to think about how it affects. Can this help a player, a current player? Meaning a guy that's going through it right now, because we're talking about things after our career. And, and for, for me, for you, for all ex-players, the mental aspect, and then you look at all the injuries, hopefully I think that this can affect it. But now, as a current player, can this help me get over those things quicker? Can it help me heal in the meantime? And this is something that the NFL, for sure, obviously I think they're in the next CBA, they're going to uh, allow oh, yeah. yep. cannabis. Leaves. So they're they're going to allow yep. marijuana. There's no doubt about that. But the CBD in particular, can this help guys to get rid of the pain pills? Because I remember they were handing out pain pills like they were candy. Oh, you're hurting? Take a pain pill. So Say, here, let me give you a prescription. And then you see on those commercials yeah. at, at nighttime, hey, if you took Side this, effects. and then, you, you know, you, you're going to die is soon or whatever it is. right now? Like, can an active player they, take it? No, they still consider it a byproduct of yeah. cannabis, yeah. even wow. though it's hemp derived. You can't use it. You know? And, you know, the, the difference between the two plants, CBD from hemp and CBD from cannabis is still the same compound, uh, molecularly, structurally, property-wise. Yeah. So, you know, it's I, I don't understand what the you know the big fuss is about yeah you know because it, you know so but in the isolated form like I'm talking you know when they it, it pales in comparison to a full spectrum or full plant extract I but it, it can help players though I mean it absolutely oh, can oh, help oh, without a doubt uh, I'm not even gonna lie I would be wrapping up my career right now rather than I, I my career started off great right as as I wanted it to um, three years three Pro Bowls and then. Injury after yep. injury, yep. whether it was mental with concussions mm -hmm. or it was physical, uh, a knee surgery. I've had about ten surgeries, eight from football. Yeah, and you're you're always on the mend. You're always, you know, and I've never had this level of connectivity from my mind and body. That's dope. Dumb question. It's I'm not all, dope. It's no, CBD. Nice. That was actually my question. <laughs> Going to implicate myself when I do my THC. Am I also getting my CBD? Uh, yeah. What what do you do for it? in small small amounts? Not enough. And depending on how you're ingesting and frequency, exactly. Oh no, yeah. I'm not ingesting. Well, but, but but think about this. So so you can grow so different strains of, of marijuana. You can be be high in yes, THC. Right. Others can yes. be high in CBD. So obviously, oh. if you're growing hemp, a little bit different. But you want the the stuff that's high in CBD. All right, get in there. Uh, you have to do uh, yeah. this. You have this to do this. This is my favorite this. segment. By the you way, you have to do this in the voice of Cheech and Chong. What voice is that? Hey, man. Yeah. Thank you, Lofa. <laughs> Thank you. Right. What's up, Mahomes? What's up, bro? Yes. You're not allowed to leave your house for a whole week, man. So there's no internet or TV. How do you pass your time? And you're not going to be first. We this is an amazing you. question for that voice. Yeah. So you're stuck in your what, home. What are you going to do, bro? What are you going to do to pass the time? If you had no form of distractions or media, what would you do? What, to do? Well, let me see that question again. Yeah, I like to analyze If you're everything. stuck in your house, no TV, yeah. no, no internet, TV. Yeah. what are you going to do to pass your time? Do I have movies? No, like that. That's in like media. Is it with uh, or without it? the kids? Uh, without the kids. So yes. you are by yourself. Just me. With no nothing to distract you. How would you pass the time? And you're stuck there. 
That's a that's a that's a really complicated question. That sounds horrible. That's that's a, go ahead. You who go thinks first. Up, who thinks <laughs> up these questions? Adam. Dude. Adam does. Wait, do I have books? I well, yeah, I think yeah. You can read. Yeah, that's you're not allowed. you're not like you're not Reading's like in allowed. a cell. Yeah, we're just taking away media like television and movies and stuff and social media. Yeah, I would read. I would read. Would you? I would try and meditate. Really? I would meditate. write. No way. I, that's really? what I do in my real time. Is that what you do in your real? Because yeah, you told me before you like reading. And all, eh. Yes. I, I'll tell you this. I like reading. Reading. I'm a fan of it. I, I enjoy reading, but if I was just free and was like, you know what, I have nothing to do, like I have without the kids. I'm I, nervous. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to read. I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to do stuff around the house, probably clean up and <laughs> vacuum. Vacuum. Clean the house. <laughs> clean up. I mean, I, 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 reading, I'll be like, oh, look at those books. That's nice. And just keep <laughs> on moving. I, I'm, I'm not reading, no. I, and I like to read, but it's like, uh, I got you. I got you. I don't want to work today. All right, Lofa, what's your answer? Um, I said, yeah, if, if it's not playing with the kids and being active, getting yeah. outside, you know, you're getting some fresh air, then yeah, I'd clean the house or read. Okay. And those are your two smart, options. Smart those are right right answer those is, are two options. CBD and feel better. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Zone in balance, the only <laughs> pill that gives you a thrill. Is it a pill? Uh, it's two different forms. It's actually, it's. So here's the dropper, the oil dropper, which Whoa. goes oil dropper. It go, on that's good tongue? on the golf course now. It goes on your tongue. So like, it is. So there, yeah, there's the PGA and um, there's uh, the you know Bubba Watson. He's been an advocate for it, right. you know, and like there's other sports that are you know um, either not screening for it or not you know penalizing person. Yeah. For, well, for well just imagine common sense, golf maybe? is such a mental game. Just imagine your ability to get over the pain in my knee and mentally focus in and the pain on in my the, back on, yeah. the, on my back and my ankle and all that yeah. different stuff every yeah. golfer is always like I don't know why my back's hurt I'm like maybe because you're repetitively yeah, swinging your hips on your body. 80 times they gotta do that for four days I yes know. and then every day that leaderboard's changing and anyway, really almost I go, five really. I go through 11 holes and I'm like I've had enough and they're playing no. what is it 72 I holes want the, I want the, the, the cart person to oh, be, yeah. be with me <laughs> on a golf round okay so what voice am I doing this in Lofa I have no idea. Listen, since Loaf is here, Pete Carroll's voice. Uh, I don't even know. I kind of want to do like Mike Singletary. Yes. You got that one down? Well, I just. You, it, he's you just, want to preach to us? Winners. I think yes. it's more the delivery. Yeah, the Perfect. energy. Perfect. What is? What's the dumbest thing you thought was true as a child? What's the dumbest thing that you thought was true as a child? Mm. Every, every kid has things that they thought were true that were not true. That what is, is the true. dumbest, or what is one that comes to your mind that you thought was real and wasn't? My, I just thought of one. It's a little embarrassing. What do you got? Okay, we're going to let it all well, out. I, uh, yeah, I got one, too. Go ahead. All right, mine's really gross. I thought that a man's testicles were grapes that were not swallowed correctly. And, and did your parents tell you this? Or how did you how did you come to this? So I one day I was like, I was like, I was like, mom, like, I need to chew these. Yeah. She was like, stop fucking touching them. Yeah. That's not what they are. You need to chew those. Chew oh, I need chew. more mental acuity. <laughs> yeah. What are you no the time? Chew what? What are you talking like, about? I thought that like I had accidentally swallowed grapes. Oh. And that wow. that was my balls now. Yeah. Yeah. And your mom? That was the dumbest thing. I am sweating so much right wow. now. I can't believe it I just is a little warm story. in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you what's know, yours? your parents, it's, I have two of them. So your parents always tell you, you keep making that face, you're going to get stuck with that. Ooh, good one. That <laughs> happens all the time. The other one, so that, that happens. I, I think you can get over it. I was so afraid to do cross eyed and someone's going to smack me. Yeah, in the back yeah, of yeah. My you'll, you'll be and stuck, be that, stuck way. that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one, as a parent, I, I, I hear it and I actually start thinking. And so back in the day when you were allowed to. Discipline your kids gotcha. in a different I, way, yeah. right? You know, I was smacked, guys, so yeah, spanked, yeah, all that stuff. My mother would always tell me that I'm doing this because I love you, <laughs> and I'm like, eh. as an adult, I'm like, maybe, maybe that's not why you're doing it. Maybe, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but maybe that's not why. So there was a stage of your life where she's like, it's all love. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm doing. I'm I'm not disciplining because I don't love you. I'm doing this because I love you. Man, I'm like, ma, I want you to do something more like, you know, nicer. Because you love me. Do you have one? It's gonna hurt me more. Yeah, it's gonna hurt you exactly. It's not hurting you at all. It's not hurting you at all. Actually, I'm the one crying. I don't know. I'd have to say, you know, the Easter Bunny or you know, or Santa, and that, you know, that's how old. How old were you when you learned about Santa and the Easter Bunny? I mean, it might have been like second or third grade. Wow, that's young though. That's kind of young. And I think it was like you know, it was like kids on the bus. I want my kids, and so I was like, nah, yeah, no, that ain't true. So I want my kid to know. Little, little Tommy Dreamer was like, "Listen, you know, Santa's a fraud." I, yeah, I think talking about what we're no, going to get talk about. There's no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Earmuffs. Santa's real. Earmuffs, Brian. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's what it was. it was. And I went back to my mom and dad. I was like, yo, this kid on the bus said this isn't real. <laughs> like, one of you right. lying to me. Somebody's lying. <laughs> but, and, and Tommy has never lied. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, um, Tommy's in the third grade. He knows everything. But yeah, but that's just, it's, it's just about the spirit, right? And yeah. just, you know, being with, around family and, and, you know, being connected. So um, I, I got over it relatively quickly. Did you? No pun intended with it. Did you then, uh, with your kids, did you let them believe in Santa? Or uh, uh, I hope they're not watching. Santa's still real. Yeah, if Santa is real. Wow. Because we this, need to I, release this. Did for I tell you the two things and Santa for a parent? Bribery and fear. I mean, you have to use mm. them. Bribery. This Santa Claus thing is straight. So you can get your kid to act good from Halloween to Christmas by Santa's saying watching. Santa is watching. Yeah. yeah. We. I use this elf thing. You know the elf, elf on the, the show. Oh my goodness. My daughter loves this thing. I trick her every day. Uh, you were bad yesterday. Elf on the Shelf went home. I'm going to be You're using today. Elf on the Shelf year round. Yes. That's yeah. That's Elf on the Shelf is going <laughs> home. He's not coming. <laughs> Oh, I was good yesterday. Yeah, so Elf on the Shelf is above the refrigerator. Yep, he sure is. The best part is actually hiding that and seeing yes. if they find it. And I actually get a little alarmed because I don't, I, it's kind of like out in plain sight. So when my oldest, you know, he's, you know, not in the moment all the time. He's got yeah. a great imagination. Uh -huh. Sometimes he doesn't find it when it's like on the kitchen table. I'm right. Like, Yo, it's right there. You uh, hot, hot, hotter, like <laughs> <laughs> on fire. <laughs> uh, Lova, thank you for coming in. Uh, where can people find Zone In Balance? What, what website, what, what social media, all that stuff? ZoneInCBD.com. Give us a follow on Insta, Facebook. Um, and is that also at Zone in CBD? Yes, at okay. Zone in CBD, um, an e-commerce site. And uh, so, yeah, we're excited about it. And uh, the Zone In Wellness is, you know, a Facebook page.com that you can go and, and check out more. We're going to be storytelling. You know, we're all athletes. Nice. nice. Everybody's nice. athletes. So nice. we're just going to go around correcting, you know, uh, collecting all these stories and, and you, know, you know, putting it out there and giving people, you know, positivity, energy. And, you know, it's a brand that aspires to inspire. And awesome. so that's, that's what we're going to do. It's good to see athletes not only giving it back to the immediate athletes, guys that are playing now, but also giving back there to the community. It's a much bigger community outside of uh, the guys that are playing, the alumni of no the game doubt. that need this, I, that need this. I just got hit up by a couple Hall of Famers. So and hey. if, if they, if they, you know, let me release their mm -hmm. names down the road, I will. But they, they, they love the product Great. and they love what it's done for them. So I'm excited to use it too. Lofa, thank you. We're going to be bro. right back and we're going to break down the crazy trades of ah. Jalen Ramsey and Marcus Peters. Stay with us. Lofa's the man. Lofa is the man. Just a great dude, solid dude, Polynesian background, obviously. But there are so many guys that I play with with Polynesian back, uh, background. Reno Mahe, Vi Sekahema. I didn't play with him, but yeah. I know Vi very well. Isaac that we talked about in San Francisco. Just great dudes. They're such good people that I go, man, I wish my people were like that. You know what? I wish sometimes, I wish more people I just I wish yeah. our people were like that. They're more be more giving, oh. be more into like I just want to help others. Oh, I, I wish all of our people were more. Take like his that. cup though. Yeah, get that out of here. Yeah, get that out of here. Take his DNA. Let's check it out. <laughs> um, but we're gonna we're gonna use some CBD later. So the two <laughs> big moves yesterday. I was on Mina Kimes' podcast when the Peters thing came out, uh -huh. and I I was very confused. I went, "This is a Rams team that just put a keep to leave on IR. Right. That their starting safety John Johnson has a shoulder injury mm -hmm. that they're saying could last for weeks, and then you're going to trade Marcus Peters." And we were sitting there looking at the depth chart, going, "Who do they even have left?" No clue. And then they make this move for Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I think that is the bigger move, so let's talk about that one mm -hmm, first, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll get back to Marcus Peters. But Jalen Ramsey for two first-round picks and a fourth-round pick. Yeah. Teams across the NFL are upset. Eagles fans are freaking out. Chiefs fans are freaking out. Titans fans are freaking out. I'm upset because now I owe you a money. Yes, you do owe me a money. Well, now we're even. What? Are we? I won the Chiefs line back. yes yeah you did then you won this or so even right now but i feel i kind of feel like since you owe me the money more recently that i should get two monies because you were so wrong the, the, the detroit lions weren't even in the in the conversation we don't know who is in the and they have they have a good secondary already too yeah well you're not getting two money so you owe me two money no i do double not. the money this works <laughs> but jalen ramsey on the rams it has, I have so many questions. Do you believe first that two first round picks and a fourth round pick for Jalen is a good return for the Jags? For the best, for the best cornerback in the league for the last few years, he can play man to man. He can play 
uh, zone. He can take the ball away from the other team. So yes. he changes the possessions, obviously give you an extra possession. And he's like 24 years old. 24 year old, long arms, athletic, physical. I, I, I don't have a problem with the compensation. I think that I, that's I don't what have it was going to cost. That's the going rate, right? So you get a guy that can shut down If you believe he's going to resign long term. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. If if you can, and, and I have to believe that he wants to resign there. He wants to go there in, in for a team. And really, he's, the team, the Rams, have lost all of their leverage. So they're going to have to pay him, which you should expect to be pay him, the highest paid defensive contract in the league. That That's just simple. So I don't have a problem with the compensation. You're going to have to pay him. I think this team as a whole, they're going in the wrong direction. Tom Coughlin came out and said the goal is still to win the division. Um, I think it's interesting because I look at their division and I look at the Texans yeah. and I go, that's a team that you would probably need Jalen Ramsey against. Mm-hmm. I look at the Colts and I go, if T.Y. is healthy, you'd need him there. Need him. But, you know, I think I wonder if Jacksonville held the Saints to 13 points and said, you know what, without Jalen Ramsey, we're still able to do oh, this and we'll figure this out. It's addition by subtraction. And I think they also realized that Jalen was never coming back. He didn't want to come back. No. I mean, he made up every excuse, the baby in the back. And he, he, he didn't want to be there anymore. It was in his mind. And so this is the way I thought. I thought Gardner Minshew was playing well. Right. And maybe you could convince him to come back because the team had a chance. Now they're 2-4. and four. And you have no reason to come back if you're Jalen Ramsey. I want to be out of here. I hate I hate Jacksonville. I want to be somewhere else. And if I got a chance to go to the Rams in L.A., that's the place I want to be. And so, of course, you're not going to talk him back to, to coming back into a team that's two and four. He's used every excuse in the book not to be there. And so I, I – With that, though, man, the Rams are the most top-heavy team in terms of salaries in the NFL. Absolutely. You do not trade two first-round picks and a fourth-round pick for Jalen Ramsey mm-hmm. and do not sign him to of a big deal. Of course you're going to sign him. And we know that Jalen Ramsey is expecting to be paid as the highest cornerback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Right now they're paying Donald 17 a year, Whitworth uh, just under 17 a year, Ooh. Cooks over 15 a year, Dante Fowler $12 million a year, Michael Brockers just under $11 million a year, and the Jared Goff contract and the Todd Gurley contract. Well, I mean, I, you have to imagine he's going to be the highest paid uh, uh, cornerback. I'm, I'm thinking he probably won't get 17, so he's not going to be higher than Don. I'm thinking 15, 16, you know, 15 and a half, 16 Let million. Let me actually bucks. go back and see who the highest paid is by position because I think that's what it usually comes down to is who what is he? He wants to be the highest paid There's corner no doubt about it. in the NFL. So yeah. let me. I, mean, I, I think he gets fifteen between fifteen and six. It's probably. I think the highest paid is like fifteen point three at this point. But you know, there is a lot of teams that were saying, you know what, the asking price is too high. Our Philadelphia Eagles, the asking price is too high. I would never give that up. But what do you mean? What have you done with your last two number one picks? What have you put in the position for success with those last two opportunities you picked in the, so the first Zavian round? So Xavier Howard is a, is a little bit over 15. Mm-hmm. Norman's at 15. Tremaine Johnson's at 14.5. Xavier Rhodes is 14. Patrick Peterson is 14. I, I'm going to tell you what. He's much better than all those guys. I mean, it's Patrick like, Peterson like, is the exception. All of those guys were paid and then didn't produce upon payment. Yep. And Jalen is going, hey, by the way, Norman's 31, Tremaine Johnson's sure. 29, all that right. stuff. And then you look down, and this guy is like under 20. He's 24 years old. Well, just think of Josh Norman. I'll just use him as an example. He wasn't a shutdown cornerback. He was a he was a he was a phenomenal a, a, a zone corner. Zone guy. He did the scheme guy. type of thing. You put Jalen Ramsey against your best player, just go listen, go lock. Similar to Dion. Go lock him down. And now, and listen, every cornerback gets balls caught on him. Yes. But he's one of those guys that he'll compete to the end. He's a football player. I don't know that he had problems in the locker room no. with teammates. No. He had None. a disagreement with the coach. None. But it, it was funny because when he had a disagreement with the coach when he was playing, all of his teammates, teammates exactly. stepped in. You have nothing to worry about Jalen Ramsey from a personnel pers- personality perspective. Here's my thing, though. One, it, I'll, let me give you a positive for the Rams. Mm-hmm. Akib Talib went on IR, yep. but he couldn't return in week 15. So in week 15, and if this team can make a run in the playoffs, if it matters. you have Akib Talib and Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. You can cover any team in the NFL, any team. You're shutting down. Like, those two cornerbacks is the best corner do- uh, duo in the league. I felt the same way about Marcus Peters, but go ahead. I'm right, gonna... but Jalen Ramsey is a is, lot is better. better than Marcus no Peters because Absolutely. Marcus Teters, Peters will take risk. And apparently the, the locker room did like Marcus Peters, mm-hmm. but he doesn't fit that system all the time. I don't know that he knew what defense they were playing. There's on. a lot of stuff. Yes. He would freelance a little bit, all that. Okay. But my concern with the Rams is 
part of the reason I was worried is when I went and broke down their roster before the year, I went, this team is so top heavy that, that if any of these guys get hurt, the, the blow is crippling. Mm-hmm. Also, my other issue was this wasn't even the biggest issue for the team. That's the biggest issue. That's what I see saying. huge issues on the offensive line. Yep. I don't trust Jared Goff. At the same time, if Wade Phillips believes that what what he did in Denver, where he had Chris Harris Jr. and Akib Talib, if he believes he gets those two corners, that this defense with Donald can step up to a level that it takes some pressure off the offense. Mm-hmm. Interesting. My other thought is the CBA is coming in 2021. Okay. I don't think it's going to go well. I still believe that the Rams really look like they're going, look, we're going to spend all of our monies yeah. before 2021. We're trying to. And we'll see what happens with the NFL at that point. Jared Goff is an issue. Todd Gurley, you didn't mention him. Of course. That's a big issue. Can this offense score? But I'm not worried because I still think Todd Gurley, Malcolm Brown, and Daryl Henderson is a really good trio. Really? I think so. We, we haven't what seen I've that. seen out of Henderson last week against the Niners, the few of the ways he hit the edge, I went, oh, that kid can move. We but haven't, we haven't, point, we haven't seen that consistently. We haven't seen his offense True. do very much consistently. The, the, the biggest thing, and it was a question. Let's say that you had a feeling you were going to get Ramsey, you know you put Tlaib on injured reserve. Why did you get rid of Peters again? Because I mean, again, you're trying to win games. You're trying to. You're is third it best. salary related? Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe you sign you sign a contract to Ramsey at this point. But don't you have to play some games before you get Tlaib back? You still got to win some games. I mean, just imagine yeah, they're this. putting it all on Jalen right now. Yeah, but just imagine this though. I don't know who's the other cornerback. Nobody knows. What happens if? You put my I put the wide receiver in motion, put him on the other it's side. It's gonna be Troy Hill. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, Nicole I'm, Roby Coleman, who's a very good slot. I'm corner. throwing at those guys. I mean, that's that's what you're gonna do. And now the defense they continues David to, Long to in give the third up. Round. I'm just giving big, information. They keep up giving up big plays. I, I, I to me, I would have, especially with Tlaib on injured reserve, I would have kept Peters and still try to get Ramsey. And I don't know how to salary cap. I don't know any of those things. But that's what I would have tried so to Peters do. Peters was in a contract year. Yeah. And so that's part of the reason they, were well, I would, I, no, I, I they weren't going to pay him. I would have cut him. I mean, he, I, at the end of the year, you, you got to get rid of him. So you're not going to pay him again. You get you get a linebacker in return from Baltimore, which is cool. But you got to win games. This team has to win games. If this team doesn't make the playoffs yes. this year, which is, 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 is a, a reasonable assessment that you couldn't make the playoffs. Then, listen, the 49ers – are winning a bunch of games. The Seattle Seahawks are winning, but one of those two teams are going to win a division. And that's what's so interesting to me is you look at the two biggest competitions for them in the West. The Niners do not have a number one wide receiver. No. They are based on running, running backs, the football. tight ends, and underneath routes. That's right. The Seahawks, they have Tyler Lockett, but they're not a team based on wide receiver play. No. So in your own division, you have two teams that are focused on running the football and you strengthen the part of your football team that maybe wasn't the biggest issue. I'm just saying this now. It's going to look really good because the Rams are playing the Falcons this weekend. But we could see Jalen Ramsey kind of get tore up a little bit. But the Rams offense the next two weekends, the Falcons and the Bengals, all signs are pointing the ba- the Rams going from three and three to five and three into a bye, okay. and it's going to look a little bit better. But I don't know how I feel about the Rams overall. The one that I think might have more implications for the playoffs because I have more confidence in this team being a playoff team because of their their uh, current record at four and two and their standings in their division is the Ravens. The Marcus Peters trade to me is very interesting. The Ravens' secondary has been abysmal. Yeah. They just lost Tony Jefferson. Yep. They've had Jimmy Smith injured all year. All year. But if Jimmy Smith comes back, and they have Marcus Peters, and they have not Lattimore. Earl Thomas is back there too, right? The motherfucker from Alabama who I always forget. Oh, Marlon Humphreys. Thank you. Marlon Humphreys, Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith is a hell of a trio. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really good trio. And that's the kind of trio you need to play man to man against the Kansas City Chiefs. If you get if you issue. get the good Marcus Peters. Because we've seen an oh. undisciplined, unfocused kid that has so much talent. This is this is a scary part. When I saw him coming I over from Kansas City, I know. I'm seeing a player that 
No one can run a route against. He can run with as fast as anybody in the league. When he breaks on the ball, he's taking it. He's taking it, and he catches interceptions all the time. Great hands, but I, I kind of feel as though he was unfocused. He wasn't focused on playing the game. He was more about doing other things, and we know the talent. That, that's the hard part when you see young guys. You're like, man, listen, you're so talented. You're much more talented than anybody else out there. You're not fulfilling that potential. I hope that he goes to Baltimore and, and John Harbaugh is able to refocus yes. him. That those guys around him, Jimmy Smith, Earl Thomas, uh, Humphrey, Martindale, all, all those guys can refocus him and say, listen, this is all I need you to do. Don't think about this. Don't think about that. You're not on the West Coast anymore where you're you're from. Now you're on the East Coast. Let's think about hard-nosed football and playing that. If you can refocus this kid, it's going to be tough to throw against that that, that Ravens secondary. It's very interesting because the Ravens this week play the Seahawks, Mm -hmm. and it's in Seattle. That's right. And so you look at this Seattle team that two, two Thursdays ago played Marcus Peters. Yep. And took advantage of him on a number of plays. Mm-hmm. And now he has to go back there again. So he does know this team well, which is interesting. I do think it's good for the Ravens that they have a bye week after this game yep. to really get him up to speed. But the thing that I am excited about is if that ball goes up and Peters gets his hand on it and he's wearing a Ravens uniform and he starts streaking across the field, it's going to look beautiful. Yeah. There are certain teams that I like when certain types of players are on them. A shit-talking, pick-six thriving Mm -hmm. defensive back with a motor mouth and wheels is a Raven. Well, that's how the Ravens were built. And let me tell you that Marcus Peters, there's times where I think he's – Marcus Peters was born to be a Raider Mm -hmm. and a Raven, and I think he's on one of those teams right now. I like that. We'll see, though. I like the way you're thinking. You're thinking the right It'll way. It'll look beautiful. You're thinking the right way. But yeah. I also know that at the same point, like I look at the Ravens, and it's like your defense is already getting shredded. So at least you have a guy that, if he guesses right, can really make a big play. But we'll see. The problem with the, Ra- the Ravens, as I watch their defense, a bunch of talent all over the, the doggone field, a bunch of talent everywhere. They have so many mental errors, though. I mean, they're just messing up simple things that every defense, every defensive person knows. They're just messing it up. And, again, you're talking about refocusing a player? You need to refocus that entire defense. You're just too good for these types of things to happen. The other part is this. You're one of the best teams in the AFC, period. Top three teams in the AFC. You have a chance of maybe going up to New England and playing them in the playoffs and trying to get into the Super Bowl. This is the time now to fix all those small things. This is a time now that you say, listen, if we can get these couple things, these mental errors fixed up, we can roll towards the playoffs. That's the type of defense that they can have with all the players that they have on that defense. I think it could be really interesting. I just want to get a few injuries out there for people as we start looking ahead to this weekend's game. The Bears putting Akeem Hicks on injured reserve is monumental. The big story that we talked about with Warren the last two weeks, the Raiders game and the week before, where the Bears, they were kind of able to get run a little bit. Akeem Hicks was hurt. So now he's on injured reserve. Let's watch and see what happens to this Bears defense. He's the guy next to Khalil Mack that you also have to be worried about. Mm -hmm. Cowboys defensive end Tyrone Crawford having hip surgery. Another guy on a D-line that's been surprisingly underperforming. They were deep. They're getting shallow. Watch out for Dallas. Also, this Amari Cooper lingering hamstring issue. I do not like really good athletes with leg issues. Speed guys. Definitely. So, and I'm going, wow, and you're taking on the Eagles? Mm -hmm. And the heck, what did you think about Doug Peterson saying we're going to win on Sunday? I don't think that he said it exactly that he way. He didn't guarantee it. I think he was just like, we're going to go down there and win a game. So, in my mind, I think every head coach would say that. Yeah. But it's Philadelphia and they're uh, crazy and they yeah. read it as a guarantee. Uh, and that's good. So what? So what? Yeah. So what if you guarantee a win? What, what else am I supposed to say? Because when I talk to my team, and I expect every other coach to say the same thing, listen, we need to go down there and win. I guarantee a win inside of this locker room. I, I don't think his statement was taken the right way, but – I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even lose I hope a, it becomes a, a, thing. a wink of sleep over it. I would say, yeah, I, I said that. Yeah, you take it however you want to. I read into this and it scared me a lot. Alvin Kamara has a quote 
high ankle type issue. That's a problem. Unquote. That's a problem. Why is it that when I hear high ankle sprain, yeah. I get shivers down my spine? Well, you should. Why? Well, well because first I've of all, I've never had one. He's a, I don't even know if I have a low ankle. Yeah, you don't want to hurt. I kind of have a cankle. Cankle. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Stop agreeing. You, but listen, when you're on the diet, I can see you getting slimmer. I've eaten really well the last three I days. I can tell. I'm looking at you. You look, you look slim. Do like, do, do suck, you got to suck it in, in the cheeks a little bit. Yeah, there you go. There you go. No, the, here's a problem with athletes, <laughs> athletic guys like Kamara with, with these types of injuries. The high ankle. Well, you have to, he, he cuts a lot. He makes people miss. He makes people miss. He, he is an explosive guy. It's about lateral quickness, where in and out routes. Leg, where on your leg is the high ankle? So the low ankle is kind of like underneath the little knot on your ankle, okay. un- underneath that. Yeah, the yeah, high yeah. ankle is a little bit higher, so you get a little separation. So it's right between that little yeah. bump on my ankle yeah, and my calf. High. Yeah, and so that's a high. Okay. And and when you get that little separation, it, your stability. So you're you're stretching out the ligaments a lot. So really, it's so you almost feel it when you cut. You feel it. You feel it all the time. Damn. When you cut, you, and here's the thing: you want to put the ankle wrap on there tighter, and so now your foot is throbbing because you got a dog on ankle wrap trying right. to support your ankle because your ligaments have so been all the stretched. Blood's going to your foot. Yeah, so it's it's all bad, and so the, the ligaments are the things that keep you being able to make those moves. It's almost better to break your ankle. It, That's it, what everybody it, says. It sounds crazy, but if you just broke your ankle. Bones can heal very, very quickly as long as you don't do any damage. These ligaments and tendons, they don't heal very fast. I had a high ankle sprain, and I came back way – I played the next week, which was a mistake. I wasn't very healthy. I was. I didn't help my team, and now I have bone spurs because of that. And and it, it's totally bad. So when you hear high ankle sprain, you look at a guy and go, he's not going to be right for four to six weeks? Well, I'll tell you this. When I hear high ankle sprain, I heard it with Saquon. I said, I hope they don't let this kid play for six weeks. And they're they're doing the absolute right thing. Yeah, in, in New York to come back by by saying nope, nope, nope. Because listen, this is a long term thing for Sa- Saquon. You want to him healthy for same the next thing for Kamara. S- same exact thing. I wouldn't let him play. But at the same time, you're riding the win streak. Your team's playing well. You're trying to win Teddy, without Drew. Teddy needs to help because I'm just saying that this is an interesting game where the Bears. It's Bears Saints in Chicago, and it's going to be nasty. The Physical Bears, football. the Bears just lost to Keem Hicks, yeah. so you go, okay, well, they sh- maybe the Saints with that great offensive line might actually have an advantage. Yeah, and then I look at the Saints and I go, this team has been based on Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. That's it. And now they're not going to have that. Who do they have? Uh, Latavius Murray is their backup. Latavius Murray, yeah. and then I guess your third string quarterback, mm. Taysom Hill. Mm. Um, they also have that speedster that every time he's on national TV, they talk about he returns punts and kicks. I yeah. don't know if he'd go back there. But there was another injury in this game that I just remembered that I think is interesting that no one talked about. Um, which one's the long brother on? Uh, Kyle Long. I think he's on IR too. So the Bears quietly in this bye week maybe put their best O-line and their one of their best D linemen mm-hmm. on IR. And it's still Chase Daniel time. That's a weird game. I've been wrong on every Saints game this year. I'm not betting that game. Well, the Bears play great at home defensively. Yes, they do. They get out to the quarterback. So yes, Teddy has do. to make sure that he's pinpoint accurate, gets the ball out quickly, which he's been doing, to be honest with you. How are they going to handle Michael Thomas? But not having oh. that one weapon in the backfield healthy. I, I, I hope that they don't play Kamara, but they may. Not- All I know is that game, I'm looking. Let's see what the under is. I, I just want him to be healthy. And listen, I, I've, I've dealt with this injury for a long time, and I still deal with it every single day. That ankle is something serious, especially for a shifty type of running back like Kamara because when he's out in space, oh my God. there's nobody in the league that can deal with him with a healthy ankle. The over-under in that game is 38 right now, and I would still bet the under. I would bet the under, too. I just think with that good Saints yeah, defense and that Bears yeah, offense yeah. with Chase Daniel yeah, I would definitely coming off of a bye at home, and we know the splits on that. Uh, the only other question I'm going to ask you is a question that Mina Kimes asked me. We're doing this before Thursday Night Football. It is Kansas City at Denver. Mm-hmm. If Mahomes' ankle is at all messed up, mm-hmm. would you sit him for this game? and give him the extra 10 days of rest, or would you play him? I said, absolutely not. I'm playing this guy. This was a very similar situation to when he solidified himself to all the haters last year when he beat Denver and he threw a pass with his left hand. At the same time, this Denver defense has come alive. Yeah, they have. Now, granted, they've shut down Tennessee and Jacksonville the last two weeks, and this is a different animal, but Denver always plays Kansas City well. I would play him. And I played. I, 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 there's no doubt about it. I, so I, I would play him. But 
this is the beauty of Mahomes. He can play the position from the pocket. He can he can go three steps and let the ball out. He can do five steps and let the ball out. His, his, his athletic ability allows him to do all that crazy stuff and all the things that we love about him makes him an MVP choice last year. But he can play the game from the pocket. 100%. And so I, I think also, I think Andy Reid tries to run the football this game. This is his, this is his MO. One game he doesn't run it, the next game he pours it on. So I think they run the ball an awful lot, but I think Mahomes is skilled enough to play from the pocket. And I also think that he's just a gamer. And he'll keep, he'll, he'll, he's one of these kids that if you don't play him, he'll, he'll just bug the hell out of you until you, until you say, okay, I'll just play you. So That's the type of kid he is. Denver right now, fourth best defense in the NFL, mm-hmm. allowing under 18 points a game, 17.7. Number four against the pass, and in terms of against the run, scrolling, scrolling, 18th. Yeah. So this is a team Run the football. that Vic Fangio – He's able – look, we talked about it earlier, and this is why it's a good point, place to wrap up. If Andy is going to get a little bit repetitive, Vic Fangio is going to find all of your tendencies. No doubt about and it. And he's going to find a way to take all of them away. This is a defensive line that, especially in Denver, can get after a quarterback. This is a game that when I saw, I went, people are going to be a little bit too high on Denver because they beat Tennessee. and like Tennessee sucks. They stink. So I'm like, oh, I can bet against Denver. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I bet you people are going to start doubting Kansas City. Are they going to Are they going to lose three in a row? That's the question. Ugh. Will Andy Reid and this imagine? Kansas City Chiefs team lose three in a row? Two of which were at home, which is mind-blowing. So the last two losses. Right now, the spread opened at Kansas City favored by four and a half. Okay. It is down to three. Okay. Kansas City is favored by three on the road in Denver. Brian Westbrook, we have not done this yet this year. What would you pick? This offense for Kansas City has just looked average at best the last three. I mean, they've just looked okay. 19 points against Indy, 24 points against Houston. I I believe that Andy Reid has had to be in the lab trying to figure these things out. I think he runs the ball, gets LaShawn McCoy in and out of the backfield, catching the football. I think Patrick Mahomes refocuses, doesn't throw an interception like he did last week. I think that they go out there and they win the game by more. Was it three? Three. Yeah, I, I think they win by more than three in Denver. So last year in this same situation, it was a tight game the entire time, and Patrick Mahomes came back. So it was 13-10 to 10 in the second quarter. Mm-hmm. It was the Denver Broncos last year in week four, right around the same time, hosted Kansas City and was up 23-13 to 13 in the fourth quarter Ooh. with seven minutes left. How much did, did and Mahomes score? came back and led two touchdown drives, and they won 27-23 to 23 to win that game. And I, I do not think they covered, no. but they won. Well, but do you know what happened in that game that they don't have right now? Kareem Hunt. Run game. 19 carries, 121 yards. Mm-hmm. And that's really my issue right now with this Kansas City team is we kind of like Darren Williams. We kind of like Darrell Williams. Yeah. We kind of like Darwin Thompson. Yeah. We kind of like LaShawn McCoy. But you they, don't love any of them. They haven't found a guy yet. And I don't know that Andy loves any of them. Just I mean, he's not going to give McCoy 20 carries. It's just not going to happen. The other thing that I like about this Broncos team, I, I, I like their running back group. Yeah, I, I do just, too. I like Freeman. I like Lindsey. I, I like both of those guys because you got that thunder and lightning, lightning type of deal. Lindsey, and, and I watched them all last year very, very closely in the beginning of this year. Speed, oh, quickness oh. can hurt you out of the backfield. And this this Chiefs team has been susceptible to the run. They, 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 however, an offense can beat you. They've done that against this Chiefs team. And so, even though I don't believe in Joe Flacco any longer, I think that. This Denver Broncos team can run the football down the throat, and then they can play action you just enough against a bad secondary for for the the Broncos to beat you. I mean, the Chiefs to beat you. And so offensively, the Chiefs have to be able to put pressure on the Broncos to make them depend on Joe Flacco because if they start the run game going, which I know they're going to try to do, I think the Chiefs have a very hard time stopping the Broncos doing that. I'm trying to see. We are recording this on Wednesday. I'm just trying to see if Chris Jones is practicing right now. Ah, that's it. Now, now I'll tell you about because Chris that, Jones. That's something that no one's talking. Grown like, man. He's amazing. He's huge. He's physically dominant. The one thing that you want from an interior rusher is a guy that can put his hands on you. 
He can move an offensive lineman left and right. Oh. So he can look to the left, look to the right. And Chris Jones is one of the best in the league when, when healthy. His ability to do that, I'm not sure he's going so to play Chris or not. Jones did not practice on Tuesday. It's a groin issue. Ah, that hurts. And there's nothing I like less than a defensive lineman with a groin issue. Well, maybe he doesn't practice just so that he's ready to play. Short Sa- week. Short week. Sammy Watkins limited, Sammy. but with a hamstring injury. Sammy's been hurt his whole career. And that's the tough thing. There is a chance Denver gets back Jawan James. There is a chance that Derek Wolf does play. But Kansas City right now, banged up. I think if I had to bet, I would take the three points and Denver at home. Mm. And it's really weird. It's But it's, it's a game that I think I – if Denver jumps atop early – Yes, I know that they that the Chiefs can come back, but Denver can really pound this rock. At the same point, if Andy Reid dials up some screens and jumps ahead to a 10-0, 14-0 lead, guess what? They might win by 30. Yeah. Uh, I'm just stating this for the record. I have not gotten a single Thursday night game right this year. I don't Good. bet Thursday night football. It's the weirdest. So if I'm saying Denver, anti-gut it, bet the Chiefs. There you go. That's all I would I do. I trust you. I don't, I don't trust your gut. Lofa was the man. Again, his product. I'm going to try that today, man. I need to Zone refocus. So in balance, I'm going to take it with some water right now, put a little dropper on the tongue tongue. Yeah. Have yeah. a little fun fun. Absolutely. Calm down a little down down. <laughs> uh, I am the L-E-F-K-O-E man. Uh, the cup is always fun for Lofa Tutupu, for Brian Westbrook. The rocket man. We never got his nickname. Uh, I think he skipped out. He didn't want to give a, a nickname. Lofa the Lufa. Lofa? No, he probably wouldn't want that. He's a physical, nasty linebacker. Dude, he looks like he could play right now. He he looks jacked. And, I'm, and, I, and I tell you, he was nasty on the field. He's a nice guy, but he was nasty on the field. Love that. You're the man. You guys are the homies. 33% appreciate y'all. Be back with Warren coming up later this week. Peace out. Love you. Peace out. Bye-bye.